I've previously made two videos about balancing robots that use actual spinning gyroscopes to balance. Most people have seen a mechanical spinning gyroscope or a spinning top. However, it's not quite that simple. Spinning gyroscopes precess when they lean over, which means the whole assembly rotates. This is because the spinning force and the gravitational force combine, causing a perpendicular force to the angle of tilt. I previously did quite a lot of testing on this, so you should check out the previous videos if you missed it. We can use this to our advantage though by using the perpendicular force to control the robot's stability. There are commercial units that do this like the Seakeeper which keeps boats stable. I made a device that measures roll with a solid state inertial measurement unit and then uses that data to move a gyro in tilt, which in turn exerts an opposing force in roll and keeps the device balanced on a single edge. In my second video I used a pair of gyros moving about a vertical axis to do the same thing, and I made a robot that can balance on a single pair of inline wheels. This worked pretty well and it balances quite robustly. I've also previously made various two wheel balancing robots that can balance back to front by driving forwards or backwards to catch themselves. This is just like a Segway scooter or hoverboard. So today I'm going to see if I can combine the two and build a robot that can balance on one wheel. The first task is to see how much space I have for a driven wheel, so I've designed some 100mm extensions for both of the wheels to give it some extra height. Well that seems to work okay, it's not quite as stable as it was when the gyros were closer to the ground, but it'll still balance with a small external shove, and it stands up fine the rest of the time. Ideally I'd have gyros of a larger mass or make them spin faster, but for now I'm going to leave them exactly as they are and just redesign the chassis to include a single wheel. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I'm using a Turnigy Aero Drive 6374 190kV motor, that should be more than powerful enough and it's going to be driving the wheel which is essentially a big cylinder with a TPU tyre and it also has a 3D printed T5 pulley on and this is going to be a belt drive. The motor's mounted onto the chassis there with its pulley sticking through. We also have another plate which is going to fit onto the back of the motor with a bearing on, and that's also where the encoder is going to be mounted to drive the motor accurately. So here it is together with the belt drive, and I've just printed this so the belt is the right tension, there's no idler or anything fancy like that. But that seems to run okay, and it gives us plenty of scope to lean in all directions so we can see it's truly balancing on the tyre, which is of course a round cross section. Thanks again to Robotis for the Dynamixel servo for this project, this is the same servo from last time and it's an XM540W270T. I'm using the same gyroscopes from last time that are still perfectly in one piece despite all the comments that they would fail and all the ball bearings would shoot out and kill me. Each ball bearing is in its own pocket with a lot of perimeters and I can assure you that 3D prints are really strong, I've ridden for miles on 3D printed skateboards in PLA without any failures at all. And of course the gyroscopes are only doing around 3000 RPM, so there should be no problem holding those ball bearings, at least considering each individual ball bearing on its own. As before, the gyroscopes move in their reactive axis in opposite directions, and they both actually spin in opposite directions as well to cancel out any other unwanted effects. My main drive wheel runs really well and that's now bolted in with nuts and an M8 shaft that goes all the way through so it's nice and secure. So that looks like it's going to run really well, we shouldn't get any other mechanical wobble or any slop in the system. I'm using pretty much the same electronics as the previous gyro balancers, and that consists of an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit partnered with its own Arduino Pro Mini, the Mega2650 which is responsible for all of the balancing, and that also has the Dynamixel shield on from Robotis to drive the servo. 
I have a battery specifically to drive that servo which is 11.1 volts and that's because the others all run on 24 volts including the two VESCs which are powering the gyroscopes. To balance it up I've got two of those batteries though so one is powering the gyroscopes and one is powering the O drive you can now see has been fitted to power the main drive wheel to balance in the other axis. And that's an O-Drive 3.656 volt version and that's going to be using an encoder which is mounted on the other side just next to that motor on the back of the motor shaft so we can accurately measure the motor position and make sure the robot can balance properly. So we're all wired in and ready to go so all that remains is to try and tune it up and give it a test but I've got quite good at tuning robots like this so let's just go straight to the testing. But before we see how well it works, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. CuriosityStream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. CuriosityStream is also extremely affordable at under $20 a year. And Curiosity Stream isn't just for adults, the school summer holidays are soon, which means long days at home with the kids. There's lots of content on Curiosity Stream specifically for kids, and it's a great way to keep their education going throughout the summer. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service which addresses our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. It's available worldwide on many platforms like Android devices, iOS, Roku, and smart TVs. Curiosity Stream's content spans science and technology, nature and history, society and lifestyle, and they're adding more exciting content all the time. Go to curiositystream.com slash James Bruton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for my fans, use promo code James Bruton and you'll save 25%, which comes to only $14.99 a year. So click the link below and go to curiositystream.com slash James Bruton and save 25% right now. So that's only $14.99 for the whole year, which is really affordable compared to other streaming services. Right, we better get this on the floor and see if it actually works. So as you can see, it is in fact balancing on one wheel, which proves the principle of this type of balancing. So I'm pretty happy that it's worked out. Now you'll see that it isn't quite stable and it won't quite stay on the spot without wandering off. Now the two gyros are spinning in opposite directions and they're moving in their reactive vertical axis in opposite directions. So that should cancel out any other gyroscopic precession in any other axes, such as the front to back axes that we're trying to balance in. Although I'm not totally convinced that things are totally balanced and totally ideal because it seems that when it tries to balance sideways and it reactively moves those gyros, it makes it move front to back, either way, depending on which way the gyros are moving. So ideally, we need another observation controller that'll actually look at the wheel encoder count output and try and hold it in one position by biasing the set point of that controller to make it lean back the other way. So then we can get rid of any accumulated encoder counts and do a position hold. I did fit a trim pot so I can zero it in the front to back balancing wheel axis and that's just on top of the robot and you'll see me turning that shortly. It's very hard to hit absolute zero though so basically the observation controller is what we really need to kind of double check where it's balancing and make it move back the other way. You'll notice that I put the batteries quite low down and that's so it's easier for the gyroscopes to exert a force to balance in the side to side axis. However, it's not quite so good for the front to back axis that really wants a high mass, so there's a high inertia at the top of the robot and it doesn't move around so quickly. But for now, this has been a really good test to check that this method of balancing works and I'm really happy that it balances on one wheel and it can almost stay still. I mentioned it earlier in the series and I'm going to say it again that this device is not the same as a reaction wheel. A reaction wheel balancer uses a mass rotating around a centre point in either direction to push the device back in the other direction to make it balanced. So there's quite a lot of those out on YouTube already but I've not seen anyone make a one wheel balancing robot that uses gyroscopic precession to stand still on the spot and if you think you found one then let me know in the comments below. It also isn't the same as an electric unicycle, which of course won't stand up on its own stationary. It'll only stand up on its own when you're moving and help you balance in the front to back axis like a Segway. 
We could of course make this radio control just by biasing that set point with a remote controller to make it lean in either direction and then it would drive forwards or backwards just like a Segway or a hoverboard. But how would we steer? That's pretty tricky because there's only one wheel so in a hoverboard we can run one wheel faster than the other to turn but with this it's a bit trickier. So we could have the gyros actually causing gyroscopic precession to make it turn but to do that we'd really need to lie them flat like the first example I did and then move them with each other instead of against each other and that would cause gyroscopic precession and then it would spin on the spot. However, there's one issue with that which is that the gyros only exert a force when they're moving so we'd actually have to move them to make it turn but when we move them back again then it would turn back again so it'd be really difficult to keep driving in a circle unless of course those gyros could keep moving around in 360 degrees instead of having end stops and then of course it would be possible to do that. The other option of course is just having a fan that blows it round or we could have a reaction wheel that only spins when we want it to turn that would in turn though have its own gyroscopic precession when the robot leans forward to drive so that would cause some other funny problems. If you've got any other suggestions then put them in the comments below but I'm pretty happy with this and I'm probably going to build a bigger scarier version with heavier gyros at some point in the future. So if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe and also this is all going to be open source as usual so I'll be publishing all the Canon code on my GitHub and the link is in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership those links are in the description below as well and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early with no ads in so have a look at that if you'd like to. That's all for now.